This is Rhino Tuna, a character artist who is known for turning random objects, food, animals, pretty much whatever he can get his hands on, he can turn into a character design. How does he do it though? Like what makes his designs so relatable and familiar, but with such nuance? So in this video, I, as a concept artist, will be attempting to recreate Rhino Tuna style and designing a brand spanking new character. Now the hard thing is that Rhino Tuna doesn't really have any videos explaining his process unless of course you take his online course but I ain't got no money so we're gonna go the hard route of watching footage of past streams that he has done. So pretty much I will just be showing you all the journey of me breaking down Rhino Tuna style but in a more consumable package for y'all to enjoy. I will start this off by doing a master study of this cheesecake character design. When I was doing my initial research, I found out the Rhino Tuna like most artists compiles a lot of references. And then after he collects the references, he does a quick thumbnail to kind of get the base of the colors and overall like design. His first step in his process is pretty much what I do for myself. Rhino Tuna then cleans up his lines, making a more detailed and nice and clean sketch, which then he just uses for the line art, which I personally also don't do line art. So while I'm glad Rhino Tuna and I are on the same page, Next, Rhino Tuna makes a new layer underneath the sketch layer, and then with the wand tool, he makes the selection on the outside and then fills that in with color, and then he locks the pixels. And lastly, he clips the sketch layer to the color layer. So far, so good. I pretty much do the same thing in my process. But this is where Rhino Tuna and I deviate. He likes to fill in his colors and then wand select each of them individually, and then just paint inside those selections with his shadows and his lighting which is completely different to what i do but it makes sense why he does it because it's all like nice and clean and there isn't any shading out of the different areas that you don't want but the one thing that is just like mind-blowing is how in the world does he pick good colors to go with the different sections of the colors. It's wizardry at this point. By color picking, I ended up figuring out what makes his color choices just work, is that he likes to make his shadows more saturated and his lighting desaturated. Now he doesn't do this with all shadows and all lighting because you can see in this cheesecake character her hair is more saturated from the highlights and then with like slightly desaturated for the shadows but as a general rule Rhino Tuna likes to make his shadows more saturated and his lighting desaturated. Once Rhino Tuna finishes painting in the shadows and the lights, he then likes to take his sketch layer and fill it with a brown color. And get this, he then changes the blend mode to linear burn, which is really cool because it just makes the line art work really well. In the past I've done overlay and it's just kind of like not as good. Who knew that linear burn would just be freaking magical? So you best believe I am going to use this in my line art. And finally, Rhino Tuna merges his sketch layer with his color layer. And then he just paints on top, literally goals. So pretty much Rhino Tuna's process is a super simple two layer technique, which is completely opposite to my process cause I use so many blend mode layers that is just, it's just not even funny. Trying to render like Rhino Tuna is definitely a challenge but i think the way to sell a successful master study is making sure i get the phase pretty darn accurate and this is the final master study turned out all right could be better okay so now let's get into the nitty gritty of rhino tuna's art style and really delve in deep in breaking his style down first of all we can clearly tell that rhino tuna is inspired by an anime aesthetic because his characters have big eyes and small noses and typical features of anime but his rendering style is a little bit more on the realistic side but with the occasional bold line to separate different aspects of the design from each other which i think makes rhino tuna's design is just more 
appealing and easier to read. Lastly, what makes Rhino Tuna's design so relatable and overall appealing is the fact that he used common subjects as his inspiration for the character design. And then with the inspiration, he's able to create nuance with the design because it isn't strictly the subject. Like for this cheese alchemist character, nowhere is there a block of cheese in the actual design, but rather there are different aspects of cheese in the design design, like the shape of her coat with the holes in it and the pointed hood. Rhino Tuna is a good demonstration of the 80-20 design rule, which the 80-20 rule is like 80% of the design is familiar, while 20% of design is like a twist or adding some special element to the design. So for this cheese alchemist design, 80% is the alchemist, while the 20% is the cheese. You can pretty much apply this 80-20 rule to most of Rhino Tuna's character designs. And I think that's just what makes his characters so interesting in the first place. Okay, and so now I'm gonna take what I learned from the study and breaking down what exactly makes Rhino Tuna's style so amazing. And I'm gonna try to make my own character using my own inspiration, but designing it in Rhino Tuna style. So we'll see how that goes. First step, collecting references and establishing my 80-20 part of the design. So for the 20% part, I decided to do bluebell flowers because they're pretty. And for the 80 part of the design, I thought I would do like your basic rainy day weather outfit because it's the month of April and April showers bring May flowers. So here is my reference sheet, pretty standard, has all the elements that I need. And now I'm ready to start making a thumbnail. Okay, so for the pose, I know I want my character to be holding an umbrella and I also want her to look graceful while doing it because the bluebells are pretty graceful looking. With this rough base down, I can now add in some more details to this character design, making sure the face is similar to Rhino Tuna's style, and adding rainy day clothing like boots and a raincoat. With this basic sketch done, I add the colors based off of the reference image, and my thumbnail is done! Next step is to clean up the sketch. So I actually decided to change some of the design elements from the thumbnail, and that's just because I felt like the flower petals were overwhelming, and I needed it to be more subtle to have more of that nuance of the flowers into this rainy day design. Moving on to adding colors with Rhino Tuna's method. Wand select, make a new layer underneath, and fill in the colors. Then with the wand tool, select the colors, and paint in the shadows and the lighting. Next, I add a brown color to the sketch layer, and then I set that layer's blend mode to linear burn. Finally, I merge the sketch layer into the color layer, and now it's time to paint. So hopefully if I did everything well in the previous steps, then this rendering step will be a breeze. So for this step of the process, I just have to clean stuff up, add some details, maybe put in some bounce light, and of course making sure the face looks like Rhino Tuna's style face, which through this whole entire challenge, the face has been the hardest part for me to nail for Rhino Tuna's art style. And she's done! Challenge complete! What do y'all think? Was I able to recreate Rhino Tuna's style? Let me know down below. Otherwise, you can follow me over on Instagram and I will see you in the next video.